Well, Arkansas fans have waited over 1,000 days for this day. It happened back in 2017, the last time Arkansas had an SEC win. And just like in 2017, it came on the road in the state of Mississippi. Arkansas knocking off 16th ranked Mississippi State tonight, 21 to 14. Their first SEC win in two and a half seasons. And it is Sam Pittman's first win as a head coach. Dixon Street has to be excited right now. These Arkansas fans deserve to celebrate, of course, responsibly and socially distant. As you look at Dixon Street right now, this is a big deal for the program, for Sam Pittman, for this fan base. It was something Chad Morris could not do. It was something people didn't think would happen for a long time. And it comes two games into the 2020 season, a 2020 season with so many questions. One of them, would Arkansas get a win? And we now have our answer. Welcome in, Alyssa Orr here. Great to be with you and talk about timing this game ending just as we are getting ready to do our broadcast. And so let's bring in our Mike Irwin and our DJ Williams. And guys, before we break down the offense and the defense and things that happened in this game, what's your first reaction to this win? I would say mine, Mike, is do y'all want to win the football game? I mean, how many opportunities did we have to close this game out? And all Razorback fans across the state or country were just like, oh, no, here we go again. Here we go again. But the good thing about that, Mike, is they left a lot on the field and still have so much room to improve. You know, I'm not sure I've ever seen a win in a game in which there was such a contrast between the defense and the yeah. offense. This is one of the best defensive games I've ever seen in my life covering this team. Barry Odom. Man, this guy deserves a yep. raise right now. <laughs> right now. They overcame so much in this game, stopping these guys over and over again. Two fourth down stops deep in Arkansas territory. They came up with a couple of picks. They just ever and, and all they really needed was a little help from the offense. Take the ball, move it down the field, burn up some clock time. And the offense with behind some bizarre play calling where yes. it's just like run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. And you know, they're not, it's three and out, three and out, three and out. And the clock just looks like it's in slow motion. But when you had that fumbled punt yes. after Arkansas had been stopped again deep in its own territory, fumble punt at midfield. And I really thought Mississippi State would go tie the ball game at that point. Fumble punt, gave them the ball back. Then what happens? You think Arkansas, okay, you can run the clock out now. Personal a couple foul. minutes, they made a, they made a first down. You, Two minutes left, you can run it out now. No, you got to have a personal foul, stop the clock, can't run it out, had to punt again. But thankfully, uh, in spite of all of that, they figured out a way to stop them defensively just over and over and over again. Man, it was a great performance yeah, Alyssa, for Arkansas's defense. I, it's been a treat and pure entertainment watching a game live with Mike Irwin. I, I've loved it here in the studio. <laughs> I get a little crazy. <laughs> Well, I'm glad because, hey, guess what, DJ? You have watched a win, which is something none of us have done. Yeah, fair so enough. So yeah. it's been quite a while since they've actually had a win, right? So it's a little bit of a difference. But, guys, let's talk about this defense because, Mike, you talked about it, how well they played. Three interceptions, two by Joe Fouché. You had one by Greg Brooks, Jr. And, by the way, both of those guys back after missing the first game. You had the big-time fourth down stop in that fourth quarter late to get Mississippi State off the field and out of the red zone. Then you also had a lot of big-time plays by guys like Bumper Pool. Bumper Pool with over 14 tackles today. And this defense, yes, they looked tired, and yes, there were mistakes. Guys, they had some walk-ons and two-star recruits out on the field, but they played with heart, and they played with a lot of toughness tonight. Yeah, they had uh, to start the game. They had maybe their best defensive lineman out. We don't know if he's out for the season, but he's going to be out for a while. You lose Monteric Brown, one of your starters in the secondary in the game. They have all these injuries. But what I loved was the game plan. Yes. Because this, when I've seen Mike Leach lose games, this is how mm -hmm. it's done. You keep those receivers underneath. Yep. You don't let them get behind you and you tackle them. And what did I talk to you about earlier? Punish these guys. That's right. Hit them hard over and over and over again. And we kept seeing that. Uh, just hit these guys. Come up with picks. 
do, do all kinds of things, but really it was Barry Odom's game plan. And it looked a little iffy there for a while in the third quarter. I think they got tired. They yep. weren't tackling the way they'd been uh, tackling in the first half. You, don't, you weren't punishing the ball carriers and the receivers the way you were. But then they seemed to get more energy toward the end yep. of the game. It was like those guys said, we aren't going to allow this losing streak to go to 21 games. Yep. We're stopping it right here. I would say it was all by design. Um, it was a, a perfect bend, not break mentality as far as the uh, defense was concerned with only rushing three all game and dropping back. Give Costello these five-yard dumps here or there. And Barry Odom, it's almost like he watched the same thing I watched. I just saw the stats. I didn't see the uh, Mississippi State game live last week. And then I watched tape yesterday and I was like, I don't think that guy's really that good. I think he's going to give Arkansas opportunities to get some interceptions. Barry Odom thought the exact same thing. He says, guys, just be patient. He is going to throw you the football. When it's there, make a play. And that's exactly what Arkansas Arkansas did today. I wish the offense would have capitalized a lot more on those turnovers and put, you know, this game completely out of reach. But a win is a win. We'll take it. We'll learn from it. Hopefully get better next yeah, week. This Alyssa. offense, Mississippi State offense, was mistake prone. They were oh, yeah. against LSU. Yeah. The difference was Arkansas made them pay for those That's mistakes. Right. They stepped up and just took over. And these defensive stops were just fabulous. Yeah, I were. mean, you kept... Arkansas kept trying to give them the game, and then they, uh, the defense would come back and take it away from them, then Mississippi State would give the ball back. It was just maddening trying to watch that. Yeah, it was tough. A lot to work on for next week, Alyssa. Yeah. Hey, let's look at that uh, offense, though, because they did score two touchdowns, guys. One from Hayden Henry and one from uh, Davion Warren. And, guys, both of those, DJ, were wide open, guys, in the end zone. What do you take away from those two plays? Um, they were uh, wide open because, you know, they did good on first and second down. Whenever we do good on first and second down, it allows our offense to really open up the playbook. And especially with the setup plays, you can see right here, it was, once again, a little fake screen pass to the receiver on the outside usually trade knocks and then they come right back and then slip that guy who's pretending to block right behind the defense and it worked both times it was the almost the exact same play but one to Warren and one to Hudson Henry and an easy throw and catch but the biggest thing uh, Mike when our offense is successful it's all about that first down call and not having these penalties um, to put us behind the chains to even start off with and it's using a balanced offense throw it run mm -hmm. it throw it when you get back into this mode where we got to protect the lead, let's just run the ball, don't make a mistake. Yep. No, that doesn't work. Yep. Well, listen. Guys, we've done a lot of analysis, um, but I want you guys to take that analysis hat off for just a second, especially DJ, and reflect just emotionally what this means for this program. Because uh, we could dissect this game all night long, but let's not take away from the fact that they won this ball game on the road. Here's some celebration video, and DJ, just emotionally for this team, what does this win mean? Oh, Alyssa, I would love to give you something better than what I got for you, but I'm just hoping this is a reenactment of what Club Dub was last year. We all remember Club Dub <laughs> after that big win, all the partying in the locker room, and the players did not know how to handle success. The difference is, however, in this case, you got a guy named Sam Pittman who I don't believe is going to let that happen, and he's going to say, enjoy this tonight, but guys, we still got a lot of work to do, and we left a lot on the field. So I think this will give these guys this confident, like, mate, we belong on a football field in the SEC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, this was Well, how about up. this? A win heading in to next weekend against Auburn. Arkansas and Auburn face off next week, and Auburn just falling to Georgia tonight. Again, 21 to 14, the final from Starkville, Arkansas, leaving Starkville with a W. That is going to do it for your Picture on Nation report. For Mike Irwin and DJ Williams back in studio, I'm Alyssa Orange. Your news at 10 starts after this.